off grid Jayco keeping the van nice and cool while it's warm outside all from batteries over seven and a half kilowatt hours right there almost 600 amp hours at 12 volts G'day guys, Maddie Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping on another big off-grid setup to run all of your appliances anywhere, anytime. This one in a Jayco, beautiful setup guys. So you can see the power system that we've installed here um, over the factory Jayco setup. So this originally has the J35 BM Pro system for all your 12 volt stuff. And with an overlay setup that we do, so with all the Victron stuff that you can see here and the seven and a half kilowatts of batteries, this is completely reversible. So if you want to run your microwave, your air conditioner, kettles, toasters, hair dryers, the washing machine, uh, even the fridge, even though it's a three-way fridge, as a backup on mains power should you run out of gas, this system is for you guys. This is so easy to do, to turn on anywhere, anytime, even while you're driving. If they, these guys want to run their air conditioner in this during the day when it's stinking hot while they're driving, they're able to replenish these batteries from the solar and vehicle at the same time while running that air conditioner. That is like so cool to be able to do that. If it's stinking hot, you have to worry about arriving with a really hot van. You know, you're setting up, you're pulling stuff out from everywhere. You're making beds if you are, you're having a bit of a clean up. Nothing worse than doing it in a stinking hot van. With a setup like this, you do not need to do that. So that's what we've got here. So let's get down with the specs and I'll run run through with you guys what is going on down here. All right, let me just open this one. It's a, it's a bloody hot day here in Adelaide, so cheers. Ah. All right, let's put that one down there. Power Pool Scouts. Now these are Paul's current model 300 amp hour variants, okay? I've upgraded these customers um, to the 300 amp hours because that was in the fresh order from Paul at no extra cost. So these are 300 amp hours each. So there's 600 amp hours here, guys. That's over 7.5 kilowatt hours in energy storage, in lithium storage. Custom-made, handmade batteries. Absolutely love these, that's why I keep using them. So one of these batteries can run the full load of this inverter. So that is a redundancy thing and that's why we use them. You can see all of the heavy cable, 95 square cable. This MultiPlus inverter charger has a 120 amp mains charger inbuilt. So if these guys are running a generator, or plugged into a station, stay on a 10 amp supply uh, or a 15 amp supply, wherever they are, this thing will ramp up to charge this battery bank at absolute warp speed. The solar will come in on top of that, if available. So if there's so many watts coming in, this is going flat out, it is supplemented. Even if you were to plug the engine in, the 50 amp red arc charger will come in on top of that as well. Basically, no charge system is prioritized. It will use the best of whatever it can to fill these batteries to 100%. And once they reach 100% off, the chargers will sense that, they will back off into storage mode, 13 and a half volts, and just sit there and do their thing. So yeah, vehicle charging, Red Arc 50 amp. You guys know this is my go-to, and you know the reasons why. You look at the size of it, it's a great quality product. It's got an extra solar input, which we have used for a side Anderson plug. So if these guys wanna to add to the solar, which um, we'll get into in a minute, if these guys want to add to their um, massive amount of solar on the roof, they can with a portable panel. So if they park in the shade or they just want to add more power, plug it in, it runs through this and absolutely perfect. So that's all set up for these guys. It's all ready, ready to go. Got the uh, twin Victron 100 slash 50 MPPT smart solar controllers. Two of them. So that's a giveaway to how much solar I've got on this, guys. Now, you'll know what the maximum that these can deal with. So we're pretty close to it. We've done three 200 watt panels on the driver's side and another three 200 on the passenger side. So that is 1200 watts, guys. So this Jayco has 1.2 kilowatts of roof mounted solar on all the time, ready to go, doing its thing day in, day out, set and forget system. So 1200 watts, that's more than enough to keep up with this Harrier, I think it's the Ibis 4, sorry, not a Harrier Plus. So it's the Ibis 4 air conditioner. Perfect for that. These guys are not going to run out of power anytime soon. They can manage their energy quite easily. They have the servo computer system in this with the touch screens. We've done the touch 50 up there, which we'll get into shortly. And the rewiring of the factory system. So there were 
a couple of uh, AGM batteries kind of here and here and, you know, installed horribly. Not going to get into it. Anyway, we've just relocated a few things to make things slightly tidier. Look, it is a Jayco at the end of the day. You just do the best you can with what you got. Um, we basically fire this up. The J35 now pulls its energy from these batteries instead of what it was. Uh, and no charge sources are going through the J35. So your mains, your, your vehicle charging and your solar is completely deleted from it and it goes through the setup here. So mains charging is taken care of by the multi. Portable solar is taken care of by the Red Arc 50 as well as mains charging, uh, as well as vehicle charging, sorry. And then your roof mounted solar is taken care of by the smart solar controllers. There it is guys, Look, it's actually quite simple. I mean, it's quite involved to fit, you know, a couple of days, two, three days worth of work. The solar on the roof, the touch screen, you know, the, the de-engineering of the system. So this is the outcome. It is it's very neat and it looks simple. Everything has a label. We're running the LMI um, Busman bus fuses now. They're a bit of a premium product, but they just they just run a bit better. So they're easier to see. They've got this nice little tag that you can pull off. I'll bring you down and show you in a second. Uh, you know, it's all here, ready to go. Everything has a label. You know, we've got breakers up in the main cupboard there. This is a Jayco, so it's got the CMS plug system. Uh, and pretty much the way that the inverter interfaces into a CMS system, and you can look this up. There's a couple of standards of CMS out there. Jayco have been using the same CMS standard for a long time. They're basically like a three-prong pr plug with a male and a female. And the kits that we get made up for these Victron multipluses for any CMS caravan, allows us to basically plug and play the system into the factory setup without any any modification to the factory wiring. So that means when it comes time to upgrade or remove the products because you've you know written off the van, touch wood, whatever you do, the system is completely reversible within a very small time frame. And I mean look, it's an investment. There's a lot of a lot of money here, especially these these you know premium product products here. So to be able to quickly remove this, put a couple of batteries in and then move it on and sell it. Or sell it if you can recoup your money, but it's your call. At the end of the day, it just gives you another option. So, you know, your money is well spent. There we have it, guys. So 1,200 watts of solar, seven and a half kilowatt hours of battery storage, 600 amp hours. Victron Multi 12 3,120 amp inverter charger running on all of the factory outlets, microwave, air conditioner, outside outlet, induction cooking, you know, hair dryer induction cooking the whole lot the kettle the whatever you've got at home bring with you people have medical devices bring them with you you know if you want a nice sleep you can run the humidifier with this with a CPAP machine laptop charging and all of your factory outlets guys are from the inverter all you've got to do is reach up to the touch screen press a button presto you're off grid pull over on the side of the road want to make some toast press a button on you know free camping don't want to run the inverter leave it off save energy it will never come on until you want it to come on press a button microwaves on so simple and easy to be able to do this this is the day and age when um you know lithium has reached a point where we can store a lot of energy in a very small footprint why wouldn't you do it i mean you, you see the jobs that we're doing this is our kind of minimum now two batteries 600 amp hours we're doing jobs with two three four even up to 20 kilowatt hours guys big setups for the all electric vans, and that's the way the industry is going, all electric. They're removing the gas oven, gas appliances. They're going for air fryers. You know, we're putting in little devices that are plug and play. Some people just want more cupboard space and they just want to pull out an induction cooker and cook. You know, they don't want this permanent setup. Or a lot of people like me, we don't like to cook inside our vans. I'm sure there's people like that out there. No cooking in your van. Well, you don't need an appliance in your van, do you? So. Delete that from your build, run it outside. You know, the big pull and uh, slide out kitchens. You know, if you want a gas barbie, you still do it. People are putting induction cook plates in there. Why? Well, if there's wind outside and you've got a gas flame and the wind catches it, it just, it blows it away. All that heat's moving away. Well, with induction, it's, there's, there's no energy loss. It's, it's right there. Same with cooking on a griller. You know, you can do that. Outside, it's much easier. In fact, one of our, um, um, I say customers, one of our uh, work colleague, but one of our counterparts that does a, sort of the off-grid setups as well over in WA, he, um, he's got one of those Webers, the electric Webers, and I'm yet to buy one. And it was interesting enough to see what it drew off of the, um, you know, the inverting system. It actually doesn't draw a lot of power. So that's another great addition. If you want to go completely gasless and move away from your, your Ziggy or your Weber Q, go the electric Weber Q. You've got the, the two models there. 
and they run a treat. They actually run pretty perfect. So it just it just saves you from bringing another energy source. If you don't need gas and you don't want gas, then don't do it, guys. You know, you get the odd argument, well, if the sun's not shining, you ran out of power. Well, that's not true. Because if you've got enough energy storage to store the energy, you treat your caravan like an electric vehicle. And that means you fill it up, you go camping, you do your thing. Anything that comes in as a bonus, you've got vehicle and solar, that's your bonus. But you live off of your battery bank. You know, you do your cooking. That's what you want to do, do it. You know, it's, it's where the industry is going. You guys have seen it. A lot of the new vans that are coming out, they're going all electric as an option. It, the industry will move that way and you can see it where it's going now. Uh, the difference between now is that it is quite small, okay? We are in its infancy. Uh, we're only talking sort of two, 3,000 VA. Some bigger motorhomes are going 5,000 VA, you know, 8,000 plus like that for big motorhomes with dual air conditions and stuff like that. But as it is for most of your 20, 22 foot caravans, the 3,000 VA Multi Plus, five, 600 amp hours of lithium is about the standard these days. The more solar, the better. You guys know where I stand on that. To get 1,200 watts on this is a bonus for these guys. They were originally thinking maybe seven, 800, but to get 1,200, that's a big plus and a big tick for them. So we're putting in like 850, 900 at the moment. There we have it guys. JK Outback, enjoy. So we got the Ibis 4 running off grid. I'll give that a bit of a crank. All from batteries. Got the three, so 316, and getting higher into that. It's about 11 in the morning, 11:30. And what are we putting in? 780, 900 watts. A few moments ago, ramped it up now. So that's what we're pulling. But you can see what we're using for the battery. Actually, bugger all. So with 600 amp hours of uh, battery capacity, and you're only pulling 10 amps an hour. Well. <laughs> run the thing for six hours, you're only gonna pull 60. So if you're gonna pull 60 amp hours from a 600 amp hour battery bank with running the air conditioner for six hours, well, you're not using a lot of battery, are you? That's the off-grid setups if you don't have a lot of solar coming in to offset it. Obviously, the less solar coming in, the more energy you're gonna use. These will pull sort of 40 to 70 an hour on average. Uh, you might see it go higher, you'll see it go lower, but as an average with most sort of, I'd say a 20 foot van thereabouts, we find that it is about 40 to 70 amps per hour. So it's not a, a massive amount of energy. If you can offset it with solar, that's great. If you can't, just know what it pulls. And the reason behind that is if it is two in the morning and you wanna run your air conditioner, just have a mental note, call it 50 for argument's sake, 50 amps at 12 volt. So that means if you run it for three hours cause it's 40 degrees inside your van at night, put it on a timer, know that it's just pulled 150 from your battery bank if you went to uh, bed with 100% of batteries, in this case, 600 amp hours, you're gonna wake up with 450 amp hours in the bank. If you run it for four hours, you're gonna wake up with 400. My point is, once you learn what your devices draw, then you can make decisions of what to run and how long for. And to be completely honest with you guys, things like microwaves, right? Hair dryers, induction cookers, air fryers, all these products that you run for minutes at a time, uh, uh, of ill concern this is the one you got to watch every time it doesn't matter what your situation is you are running this normally for hours and hours on end so you want to make sure know what it pulls and learn when to run it very similar to your house if you don't have a battery if you run your big loads and do all your washing and run your air conditioner during the day and you've got solar it will offset what you use you know you might peek over it for a bit but it'll offset what you use so the same bears true in this. Obviously, during the day, you're going to use less of your battery if the sun is shining. And if it's a, a really, really hot day and you've got peak sun, same deal. You're going to get more energy, and that's how it is. So if we ran this air conditioner, I'm only pulling 13 amps. So if we ran back down to eight. So if we ran this air conditioner for, for five, six hours, I know I'm only going to pull maybe 40 to 50 amp hours from a 600 amp hour battery bank. So that's crazy. That's why you're able to run this all day long when you've got enough solar to offset that number. Now you guys have seen my big rundowns. Uh, let's do it. What have we got? Microwave. And we'll go. So the air conditioner's going flat out. You can hear it. I'll just put that cup in there. Quick start. So factory BM Pro system is still in place. It's basically a glorified fuse box. So microwave's gone. Air conditioner's still going. Around we go and you'll see what we are pulling. So 
It's all in real time, guys. Now you go through my other videos, you'll see how we run multiple devices at the same time. Um, Victron's one of the only products that you can run in, in pretty much twice its uh, output power, so about 4,800 watts, about up to about 30 minutes at a time, which is usually enough by the time you finish cooking, or like I said, the microwave's off now, and that that'd be, cup would be pretty warm, to be able to do that. But you remember, this is running at full song, right? Absolute full song. I got it on 16, flat out. Most people don't do that. Most people will be at 21, 22, once your van reaches temperature, it's going to ramp down. Manage your energy, guys. It's so easy to do when you've got a screen like this. And anyone can understand what's happening here. It's so easy to read. It's just so simple. We can see what's happening. So we, we're not plugged into the to the grid. We're not plugged into shore power. No generators running. So that would come up here. And you'd see energy moving this way. We are using 27 amps an hour from the batteries. I've ramped that AC right up. We're offsetting with 7, 800 watts of solar. Sorry, 790 watts of solar, there it is. And you can see the flow, see the little dots moving? So that's where the energy's coming from, coming from batteries and solar. See? To go up into the inverter to supply this 1,000 watt load. And the, the, the amount of energy coming out of the battery is here. So we're using 373 watts out of the battery and we're running that big load, so very good there. And the batteries are 99% state of charge and that's obviously gonna come down at the current rate. Now, if you want more details, just press it Go to menu, and you'll see the battery, Jayco battery. If we click Jayco battery, you can go into it with more information. So the current usage to go, running that air conditioner in 15 hours and 34 minutes, I will need to charge. It's all there, very easy to see. 15 hours, get that thing to focus. 15 hours, 16 hours. The reason why it's chopping and changing is because solar is ramping up. You know, we're, we're still early on, sort of late morning, we're ramping up. So by two o'clock, 1.30, 2 o'clock, this is going to be its, at its peak. And you're going to see this, you can see the number increasing now. Cool. That battery now, obviously with solar, if you want more information for the solar, you know, you can get into each array. So we've got a 600 left hand, 600 right hand. So if we jump into the right hand, no error. Daily history. So the best we've seen today from that array has been 400. And let's check the other array. And the left-hand array, let's see what the best we saw today was. The daily history, nearly 400 again from the top. So yeah, we're still sort of working ourselves up towards the top of the day. Um, this is time is out actually, it's uh, not set for daylight savings, we'll have to fix that. So back to pages, if you ever get stuck or lost anywhere, it'll always take you home. Three pages within the main screen at home, one, two, and three. I like this screen. It shows you what's going on just at a glance. I can tell you what's happening right now. It's so easy. <sighs> tell you what, on the 30 plus degree day, it's nice having a, uh, having a nice cheeky beer after work. So we're all done here for this one. So it's a Jaker Outback off-grid setup. We've got two per week. And I'm not kidding you, we've got two off-grid jobs just like this, very similar to this, per week between now and February. Now and February 2024. Unbelievable. That's a full year's worth of work completely booked. We are booked absolutely solid. We've got a few slots for some cheeky stuff here and there, so a couple of days, a single days here and there, but all of the off-grid jobs we are done for for nearly a year in advance, guys. Massive thank you to my support out there. You guys, without you guys, like we wouldn't be able to do this. I'm fussy, I'm very, very particular the way I do things. Got a bit of OCD, me and Riley have together. It's probably why we complement each other well with the work. But yeah, we are, you know, very thankful for you guys supporting us, especially here on the YouTube channel as well. Like we, the purpose of these videos was never to, you know, gain uh, likes or whatever, you know, has come from. It's actually just supposed to be a rundown for customers. And over time, people have just said, look, you need to do more of these rundowns. It's not only helpful for my setup, but it's it's just informative of what I want to do or what I what I plan to do. Even you, the do-it-yourself world, you know, you guys are taking notes from some of the stuff, which is really good, you know, like gauge a cable, getting it right with fusing bus bars, um, you know, cable lengths, DC charging, what's, what's possible, what's not possible, uh, what products I use, what products I don't use, and, it just works like that's what it's about it's it's community it's keeping keeping information real and as close to 
unedit it as it as it can be and which is what i do this is i'm in a caravan guys i'm i'm in the bush at the moment these guys have traveled from new south wales for this setup right it takes two to three days to do this setup on site these guys could be staying in their caravan if they want to and this setup gets done it's not rocket scientist it, it it's not rocket science it just takes particular time and attention to detail to get it done right and understanding the system and understanding how they all work and talk with each other and also understanding the van you know understanding a three-way fridge an automatic three-way fridge you know hot water service what type have you got um you know what battery charging systems in it is it being pro is it a projector setup is it a red eye whatever brand it is you know we're we're privy with it because we've been doing it for years and we understand the systems you know we're not generic auto sparkies and I'm sure they'll be able to figure it out, but we specialize in this field specifically on caravans and, and four-wheel drives and RVs. So, got any questions, guys, hit us up, easy as. Look, there's a bit of a delay to get through to us sometimes, but you know, I always get back to everyone, so enjoy, guys, happy days.